All right, thanks everyone. So yeah, it's Michael Mockney. It's good to start with that. And uh, I work for Google on all sorts of web stuff, and in particular on Cordova. Um, so, you know, who are we? Who's Google? Why are we here? Uh, there's six developers up in Canada. Um, you've seen us on the lists if you do any development or follow the uh, commits or, or dev list. Um, we are committers to Cordova, but we are also creators of something called Chrome Apps for Mobile. Uh, Chrome Apps for Mobile is a downstream CLI um, and also sort of an application structure and set of plugins to sort of bring Chrome packaged apps as they exist for desktop over to mobile on top of Cordova. Um, you know, but I'm not here to sell you anything today. Uh, I've given talks in the past about what we're building and how you can use our stuff, but really, uh, just use the web. We've seen some amazing things today, and pick your poison, just roll with it, that's all we want. Um, nor will I sing for you today. Though if I did, it would be probably the Canadian National Anthem today. Okay, so uh, two parts. The first thing I want to start with was just, you know, what's on our mind? What do we want to see happen with Cordova uh, going forward? As we prepared for PhoneGap Day, a few of us made some sort of technical presentations where we're preparing and sort of these are the things that came to our minds um, that our developers are thinking about. So a big one, especially recently, has been Crosswalk. Um, this is sort of starting to wrap, wrap up, but we would like to see this land and, and get into all of your hands. Um, so web use as a plugin, Joe did a uh, great presentation today, uh, USB cables aside. Um, Gradle and Android Studio support, multi-APK generation, these are things that are now available, uh, maybe not to you, not as part of a release, but these are, uh, have been implemented and, and will come soon. Great. Um, another big thing, so ra rapid iterative workflow. Uh, there's lots of choices right now. We have CLIs. Uh, we have building uh, for the browser and iterating in the browser locally or emulating uh, uh, through the browser. Then we have uh, companion apps like PhoneGap app or something called the Chrome uh, dev app developer tool which is based on App Harness which is another uh, Apache Cordova project. And so there's lots of different options here. You've seen tremendous uh, amount of choices today. Nearly everyone showed some sort of companion app and how to do live deployment. We'd like to see everybody come together, sort of come up with the best of breed solutions and not reinvent the wheel over and over. That's on our minds. Um, Plugin development. Uh, Plugin, you know, we've worked with Cordova to improve application development and tooling, and there's tons to do always, of course. Uh, but plugin development has not improved much since 3.0. Uh, if anything, it's gotten harder. Um, and so more and more people are starting to write native code and not writing it inside of their uh, platform application template, but outside of, as plugins. And uh, even more so would do that if plugin development was easier. So how do you write cross-platform uh, testable plugins that work well um, for yourselves or to share with others? You know, how do you publish? How do you uh, develop? And fantastic news I got today. Masa, who's sitting right there from Monaca, has told me that he will solve all our woes so I don't have to think about this anymore. So the, the Monaca guys have been experimenting with actually uh, live updating plugins inside the companion app. They will, you can make ed, native code changes, not just JavaScript changes, and uh, push it out to your companion app and see changes. And so really rapid development. Um, they also have all sorts of nifty things like uh, your plugin XML structure will be automatically generated based on your directory structure. So you can create new files, refactor, move things along, work in an IDE, and uh, your plugin will be automatically generated. So it's kind of a pain in the butt. Everybody does it the same way, but you have to do it manually. So this is fantastic. I'm, you know, now he's on the line, right? <laughs> and he'll have this in two weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's promised to do that, so that's awesome. It doesn't have to be Cordova. Just put it on the registry. We'll be happy. OK. Uh, Plug-in testing was something uh, that I, I was near and dear to my heart uh, recently. So we have these new style tests. We used to have this mobile spec, and it was sort of an application you can run. Uh, we ripped all of the plug-in specific tests out of the single application to rule them all into and alongside plugins. So when you install a Cordova plugin now, especially the core plugins, uh, many of you may not know, but uh, they come alongside the sort of test suite to test that plugin. Uh, it's not installed into your app by default, but the tests are there off to the side. And so you can, within your application, uh, run plugin tests. If you ever say, oh yeah, you know, this plugin isn't working on this particular device, something's not working, uh, there is a way to actually run our test suite and see, like, are, is the test suite failing? So is it specific to the device or is it your application? You can figure these things out. Um, and then best practices for running your own and how do you run the new style mobile spec and that sort of thing. Uh, 
a last thing I think, or, or maybe there's a few more, but uh, Cordova CLI has evolved a lot and it's a great start. And there are more and more CLIs, Ionic CLI, we have a downstream CLI, there's the phone gap CLI, et cetera. But, and then there are tons of other web development tools uh, out there that we would all like to compose with. And we all have a single shared application structure and we all agree to contribute and share plugins, which is great, but it's not entirely clear how you use Ionic together with the Chrome plugins and that sort of thing. And so I've heard from a lot of developers like, okay, I'm currently using this one and we like this about it. Want to use this one, now I hear that you know, there's yet another one, you know, help. Um, so, so there's a developer on our team who's been really uh, put together a prototype. Well, what about instead of creating a Cordova project and adding your app to it and picking and choosing plugins. What if you already had a Gulp-based workflow with SAS and uh, linting and all these other cool things and you added Cordova to it? Added your plugins and then mix and match and that sort of thing. So that's on our minds and we'll see where that goes. And finally, sort of, you know, we've been working with these various application structures, the old widget spec, Chrome apps, Chrome package apps, uh, Mozilla apps, and that sort of thing. Um, but the future is coming together in an open web app platform. And we want to experiment with the uh, web app manifest and service worker, which we just heard about, which is fantastic. Um, so that's, that's where we'll be going in the near future. Okay. So now for sort of something a little bit different. So we do have a downstream CLI. And as much as we would like to share in Gulp-based workflow, um, there's, there are certain reasons why we couldn't use Cordova CLI directly, and I wanted to go over like why we are different, how much of this we think we can upstream to Cordova. Uh, there are many things we have already upstreamed and sort of just get you a feel uh, of how CCA works. Okay, so um, how do you create our projects, prepare them, and run them? So uh, we're up on NPM, just like Cordova. So the first thing you want to do is install it, and the first command you have is something called check-in. Check-ins will check your environment and give you a message like this. We'll say, oh, you're not set up for Android development. We haven't found uh, Android Studio, which is what we now uh, look for as a sort of heuristic. Instead of uh, installing the SDKs and Ant and everything separately, we're now uh, Gradle by default, support for Android Studio. So all you have to do is download Android Studio and we'll look in the common locations and find your SDK and platform tools and everything uh, without you having to muck with paths. Um, same with iOS. So if you're on Windows, we'll look for these things. If you're on iOS, we'll look for both and that sort of thing. And you can continue iterating with installing your tools and follow our guides until eventually we say, awesome, you're set up for both, um, which is great. Now, uh, CC create foo, CD foo, just like you would with Cordova CLI, we have the exact same CLI uh, interface. Um, but when you prepare for the very first time before adding any plugins, any platforms, anything at all, we will detect using the check end, building on top of it, and say, hey, you already have Android and iOS SDKs set up on this machine. We're just going to go ahead and add those platforms for you automatically. Okay? So that's one difference from the Cordova CLI. Uh, another thing that we do is we automatically add a crosswalk for you because we are by default based on Android 4.0, which is an upcoming release. We're sort of early dog fooders. We have been for months. Uh, so we're living on the ble bleeding edge. And so all Chrome apps for mobile built using CCA uh, will run on top of Crosswalk um, uh, by default. Um, so we'll add this and we'll set everything up for you on your first prepare. Another thing we do is we add all of the plugins you need to run a Chrome packaged app on mobile. So you need sort of a, some common things, a runtime, uh, and how to bootstrap your app. Uh, so these are just things that all plug, uh, Cordova uh, or, or Chrome apps on Cordova need. Um, but if you notice, these plugins are installed from the plugin registry. Uh, so these are just plugins. There's nothing specific to our way of doing things in order to, to run these. Okay. So Chrome apps, the Chrome app directory structure requires that you have a manifest file that describes your application. So every application you start with, both the default one or if you import a complicated Chrome app you've written before, um, will have a manifest file. And at the very least, it will have a name, it might have icons, it's, you know, it will tell you how to start your application up, but you might have a list of permissions here. Uh, GCM is push messaging, it's Google Cloud messaging. Uh, identity is just a way to do OAuth authentication and it's sort of uh, natively integrated, so if you're logged into Chrome, you don't have to like, do any signing in, it'll just use the identity of the browser. On Android, it'll use your account switcher, on iOS, it will do it, uh, the best it can. Um, and native, it does pretty well. Uh, we can get into details later. Um, notifications are real rich notifications that will be on the tray and that sort of thing. So 
if you have these permissions listed in your application manifest and you ran CCA prepare, we will also go ahead and write, uh, in automatically install the plugins that are required to use those APIs on mobile, okay? Um, so there's work uh, that's upcoming for Cordova to specify in your application manifest the list of plugins you want to depend on, but we already have this as a natural extension of the fact that Chrome apps have a list of permissions, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, there's also a, a custom mobile manifest. So Chrome manifest is sort of has a, a rigid structure as to the keys that are expected and the structure uh, that you want. And there's no opportunity for sort of optional additions. The W3C spec for the uh, web app manifest, there are options for vendor prefixes and optional things. Um, but here we didn't. So for anything Cordova specific, like a package ID, which is not something you have on desktop, it is something you have on Android, uh, you have to put it in this special uh, manifest. We also have uh, platform overrides, which is sort of like a merges and clobbers concept. Okay, so a little bit more complicated. So now we have like we have this thing that checks your environment, knows what you uh, can potentially build towards. So we'll add those platforms automatically. We add the default plugins, and we will look at your manifest permissions to install the plugins we think you'll need to run your app. So uh, if you combine all of that together, you can create your application, importing an existing Chrome app that could be quite complex, uh, CD into it, and just say run Android on my device. No platform ads, no plugin ads, nothing. You've just booted from. Uh, from scratch. And there you go, it says, you know, we know you need these uh, platforms, we know we need, you need these plugins and so on, and eventually it will run on your device. So, um, you know, it's almost unnecessary to have that first line up there to create the directory structure. You could uh, just go directly into where your uh, web application lives, where your Chrome application that has a manifest, and just say run it on Android, and it will automatically inject all of the native bits that it needs to actually get it running. So uh, that's sort of, an, you know, and you can imagine the final extension is what I mentioned with Gulp, uh, where instead of saying a, an explicit command, I just add a plugin to my existing Gulp workflow. So that's pretty cool. And I just said that. Okay, so that was how you create and iterate and build, and that was sort of the, the things we do automatically for you to get, get you up and running. Um, Another thing we think we do a little bit interesting is how we deal with uh, upgrades to our tools and to the platforms and to the plugins. So there's an upgrade command, um, which will automatically try to replace your installed platforms and plugins with the latest version that we have with the tool that you have installed. And this will warn you and it will tell you that this will clobber existing files. Um, and if you do that, it will just delete uh, the platforms you have installed and all of the sort of Chrome Cordova plugins that we automatically installed for you and then reinstall those. Uh, as of recently, we would just clobber all your plugins, so if you installed anything manually, that was a bit annoying, but that's now been resolved, and so if you manually added any Cordova plugin, that will stay right there, and it will, your application will just upgrade in place, which is pretty cool. Um, and we can sort of get away with this because of your permissions list, we know which uh, APIs you want, and so we always want you to be on the latest, greatest, with the least bugs, and that sort of thing. Uh, another thing that we have is, uh, as well as an explicit upgrade command, when you do an NPM update, CCA version has revved now to a higher version. You know, maybe minor or major has, oh, yes, got it. Um, and so the first time you prepare, you've noticed that previously I had, you know, 042 installed, and now I have 043 dev because I happen to do this locally, and it says, hey, this project hasn't upgraded to 043 dev yet. You know, would you want to update your platforms and plugins automatically because there's a new version available and maybe there are some incompatibilities or maybe there are just some bug fixes or new features that we didn't, you didn't previously have available? And you can opt out and there's a flag to say like ignore upgrade, um, but this is a very useful default and so far it's been working quite well. Okay, a bunch of other random tidbits. So uh, we've made heavy use of this uh, special properties file to link to your key store. I'm not actually sure of the state of how much of this is available in Android Cordova uh, by default, but it's worked well for us. Um, so right now when you build Android with dash dash release, we'll use this, we'll automatically sign uh, your builds. Uh, and yes, eventually you will get multiple APKs because now with our Gradle uh, builds by default, you get ARM, uh, and x86, uh, as the Intel guys talk to, with crosswalks, since it's a big extra binary that you're shipping with your application, it's quite important to have multiple APK support, so you only have a 17 meg overhead instead of the full like 36 meg overhead um, that you upload to the store. Um, there's also easy support to build without 
crosswalk. So for Android L, which is upcoming, uh, which has a modern uh, auto-updating web view by default, you no longer need to rely on crosswalk. So you actually want three APKs, and we will automatically set the versions, as Intel said that they do as well. And so you just update, uh, upload your app using the uh, Play Store multi-APK wizard, and it's quite easy to, uh, for everyone to download the right APK by default. Um, another thing we have, which is similar to Ripple or browser platform, is you know, you're writing a Chrome app. We have native support for Chrome apps on all desktop uh, platforms that have uh, Chrome real desktop uh, installed. And so all of these APIs, like complicated access to sockets or Bluetooth or USB, are actually natively supported. We don't need to polyfill. So we have you know, CCA run Chrome, and your app will run right there, and then you can inspect your application and iterate locally. Uh, it, it's been very useful. We've run some demos even this week, and so we have like GCM and notifications and all this stuff, and some people could be hacking on their laptop, and then you have your mobile device, and you can have like two-way communication between these two apps. And it's also a compelling story that you can get into you know, the Chrome Web Store and run on Windows and Linux and Chrome OS and, and OS X, and then also have uh, be available for Android and iOS. So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, another little thing which is just a little bit useful is since we now support uh, Android Studio and we sort of look for the common locations where Java is installed and Android Studio is installed, and we don't need your uh, path to be properly set up, you, this will just pipe through our auto discovery and sort of auto pathing so you can get access to things like Key Tool and ADB um, piped through the CLI. And so um, users, you know, often will have the tools will work, but then there'll be some little snippet that they'll find online that says just run ADB to do this, and then ADB is not found, and so you could do this to try and resolve your issue. Um, CCA push is a command for pushing just your web assets to our companion app, and then you can do that not only through IPs or through sort of some cloud, uh, um, you know pass through, you can also deploy over USB. And we'll give you a warning to say we actually require ADB uh, tunneling, and we'll give you the command to paste, and it's really clear what you have to do. And so um, you could just do this, and then you can deploy over USB, which is very useful for especially corporate networks uh, or like conferences where you usually can't have device-to-device -device communication. Super useful for demos. Um, and then, of course, we have push watch, which is our live deploy, that sort of thing. I don't want to demo right now, but our, our app harness supports what you've seen 20 times today. Um, and I think this is the final little thing, which is we have a default git ignore. So you know, a culmination of all of these things I've discussed, uh, because you can automatically install platforms and plugins, is we actually have a default git ignore that uh, will ignore platforms and plugins from your git repo. And so you know, we've been working towards this like platforms as artifacts, where you don't actually commit those to code, you don't edit uh, directly. Um, and so um, for our users, it's worked out well, especially since if you muck around with platforms, specific things, it's not going to run on desktop. And so you really want to sort of maintain that sort of ca uh, compatibility. Um, though you can, of course, add custom plugins for Cordova applications uh, with our platform, since we're just built on top of Cordova. And I believe that's it. Thank you very much.